Some people are like energy vampires. They walk into a room and they can feel those <laughs> sucking all the energy out and they just deflate the entire room around them. Other people, when they walk into the room, it's like they're, they're blowing energy and motivation and good feelings into a room. So here's the question you have to ask yourself every single day. Do you want to be on suck or blow? At the end of this video, you're going to be able to choose how you feel each day. You're going to be able to choose from minute to minute how you feel, your motivation, your energy levels, whatever it may be. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you have to be rah, 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 all pumped up and hyped up all the time because that's not necessarily appropriate. But what I am going to show you how to do is to take control of your emotions and your energy. And we're going to do that by focusing on three things. I'm going to break it down for you and show you exactly how each of those is relevant and useful to you. I used to run three day training courses, in person training courses, if you can remember that sort of experience pre COVID. And we'd have 150 people in the room from different companies and we'd work from 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning through to 9.30 in the evening and nobody would be tired. Nobody would be flagging or have their concentration dropping or drifting. And that wasn't because I'm the world's most amazing public speaker. Um, I may or may not be, but it's down to the application of the three elements that I'm going to show you over the course of this video. We used these three elements to keep people energized and focused and in a great state for learning new information, techniques and strategies all the way through from beginning to end. And if you think about delivering that over you know, basically a 40 hour week in a three day course, that takes a bit of doing. But we were able to do it because we walked our own talk. So I'm not going to tell you that bad stuff won't happen because it will. I'm not a great believer in pure positive thinking. You know, if, if I look out of the window, I, I just say to myself, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's weeds, there's weeds. If I go out there and I pull them up by the root, burn them, and then I look out in the garden and go, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, and it'll be true. So pure positive thinking in, in, in that abstract sense, not my thing at all. I, I kind of get the idea, but it's not realistic or practical as far as I'm concerned. But what I do believe in is positive action. Deciding what you want and choosing to get it. Deciding what you want and choosing to take it and make it happen. That I believe in. So the first of the three strategies for choosing whether you're on suck or blow every day, every minute, is your physiology. Now, I've chosen to do this video standing up because that gives me more energy. It gives me more oomph while I'm talking. It's, it's very easy while you sat down to let your energy drop and for you to be a little bit more you know, flumpy or whatever the correct word for flumpy might be. But here's, here's a thought for you. Um, a lot of this stuff is actually embedded in the English language. And if you're watching in a foreign language, I'm sure it probably applies there too. I know it is in Spanish. Um, but in English, we have expressions like don't let your head drop, keep your chin up, that sort of thing because our physiology is a human constant. Now, now people are aware that if, you, if bad stuff happens, it's quite easy for you to go, oh, and you watch somebody's physiology change. If I asked you to think about somebody knocking on your door and I told you that they were shy, timid, lacking in confidence, a bit scared, you already have a mental image of what their posture is like. And everybody gets, the fact that your mood, your emotion, your energy level affects your body language, it affects your physiology, it affects the way you stand, the way you keep your head, your facial expressions. Everybody understands that mood changes body language. But the opposite is also true. Your body language will change your mood. So if you're like this and you flop down and your jaws a bit loose and your face is all saggy, in my case saggier than normal, and you all shoulders around and down, your breathing's all shallow, um, it's really very difficult to be motivated and up for it. Um, honestly, not, while I'm doing this, not only do I not feel like making a cold call, I barely feel like taking the next breath. And then, if you lift your chin, pull your shoulders down and back, stick this, it's called the me point, if you lift 
the point of your sternum out ladies i know but trust me and this is just about mood and energy levels shoulders down and back that up stand as tall as you can imagine you've got a million helium balloons attached to the top of your head and they're pulling your spine up and if you put a great big tom cruise grin on your face it is almost impossible to feel bad and miserable and depressed and lacking in energy when you're standing like that with that expression on your face and your chins up i actually defy you to do it i defy you to stand with your chin up and your shoulders down and back breathing nice and deep and strong with your sternum pointed up and out now a big smile on your face i defy you to feel flumpy you just won't be able to do it now i'm not suggesting this is a cure for any clinical issues or any chemical imbalances or anything around that this is not a replacement for professional help if you need it it is however a solution to you having a down day it's a solution to you just i just can't get my head into making cold calls today i'm not in the mood i don't know if any of you are fans of june the movie or june the books but there's a great expression right at the start of the book where uh, the hero says oh i'm just, says to his, his fighting teacher i'm just not in the mood 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 is a thing for singing and lovers it's got nothing to do with it's the same thing if you want to get yourself in the mood to do something stand or sit tall lift your chin put a great big smile on your face and then apply the next two tools as we're going through, if this information's relevant and useful and uh, enjoyable, um, hit the like and the notification button and subscribe to you. Don't miss out on any of the recruitery goodness that comes out. The first is how you act. The second is what you think about. Now, when you think about doing cold calls, when you think about talking to a new candidate, when you think about doing a brief debrief, when you think about writing an email sequence, when you think about whatever it is, do you imagine how great it's going to go? How terrific it's going to be at the end? What an amazing response you're going to get from the other people? The kind of response rates you're going to get to your DMs? All these new friends and contacts you're going to make? Do you imagine that or do you imagine, oh my God, they're all going to hate me. I'm going to get hate mail and people are going to be, oh my God. Guess what most people do? And it's not the former. Guess what the most successful recruiters, marketers, business people, entertainers, everybody. Guess what they focus on? They focus on how well it's gonna go. What a great reaction they'll get. So if you combine strong, positive physiology, how you act together with what you think about, focus on how well it's gonna go. Focus on the response rate you're gonna generate. Focus on how you can help people recruit more effectively, focus on how you can get people into the right jobs and into the right opportunities, focus on how you can brief your colleagues. What you think about is the second of these state management tools. State is a term you, you may or may not have heard bandied around, it's a personal development term uh, originally developed from uh, NLP. And state is basically a combination of your emotions and your energy and they're controlled by these three systems. How you act, what you think about, and how you think about it. Is this making sense so far? If it is, click the link down in the descriptions and join the Billings Accelerator, which goes into the strategies and tactics that you can use to grow your desk. It's the seven core elements that you need to build an effective recruitment desk and build your revenue quickly and seamlessly. Um, click the link down below. If you have any questions about that or the content, um, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will reply to everything personally as quickly as I possibly can. The third of these strategies is how you think. So how you act, what you think about, and how you think about it. Now that's simply a matter of what questions you ask yourself. I'll give you a, a simple binary choice. Um, if, you're, if you're about to um, speak to somebody for the first time, whatever circumstance, it could be a cold call, it could be that you've, you've DM'd each other and uh, you, you're just going to talk for the first time. What do you ask yourself? Do you ask yourself positive, negative or neutral questions? Let me explain a little bit. Do you ask yourself, 
I wonder how shit this is going to be. Or do you say to yourself, well, uh, I wonder how this is going to go. Or do you say to yourself, ask yourself, how well is this going to go? How good's the result going to be? Now, those three sets of questions, how crappy is this going to be? How's it going to go? How well is this going to go? That's a negative framing question. And it focuses on how bad, how awful, how much time it's going to take, how much effort it's going to get, the, how rejected are you going to feel at the end of it, all that sort of stuff. Then there's neutral, which is looking at how, how's it going to go? Well, I don't know. Don't know until I've done it. It's neutral. It doesn't imply negative. It doesn't imply positive. Um, it, it kind of doesn't really do anything for, you, for your mood or your physiology or your, how you're focusing on stuff. Or you can ask yourself positive questions, like what's the best way to make this as good as possible? How well is this going to go? How do I get them to be enthusiastic as quickly as possible? How do I engage with them as easily as I can? What's the best, easiest, quickest, simplest way to whatever? If you ask yourself smart questions, you will give yourself smart answers because you're smart. You're a human being with immense mental capacity. You have the ability to solve problems in a heartbeat if you ask yourself the right questions. What's the best, easiest, quickest, simplest way to do this? How well is it going to go? How much am I going to enjoy this? Ask yourself positive questions about the situation. And if you combine those three elements, how you act, what you focus on, and how you focus on it, what you think and how you think it, then you'll have a toolbox that allows you to pick your mood, to pick your state, to change the way you feel in a heartbeat. So let me ask you, how useful could that information be for you? What's the most important place and the most important time and the most important situation for you to use those techniques to change your mood, to change your energy, to change your state so that you're able to perform at your best. Where's the most relevant place for you to take all this stuff and use it? Those are positive framing questions. And hopefully by the end of them, you were feeling a little bit different to the way you were a few seconds before. And that's me doing it from the outside. The most important and influential person in your life is you because you take you with you everywhere that internal monologue take control of it if you don't like what it's saying get it to say something different if you don't like the questions it's asking get it to change the questions because you know that that voice you've got in your head because we've all got a voice in our head the only time to worry is more when there's more than one and one of them is possibly an ancient deity but that voice in your head is, well, you know, you. So if you don't like what it's saying, change it. If you don't like what it's asking you, change it. Do it consciously and repeat it. And the more you repeat it, eventually your unconscious will just go, okay, I see what you're doing, fair enough. And it will ask you better quality information. It will focus on more important and useful things and that will change your physiology. And then you can change your physiology as well, and you have a wonderful, virtuous circle instead of a vicious circle. <laughs> virtuous circles are much better than vicious ones. If this has been useful, if it's beneficial to you, hit the like button and subscribe, uh, notification bell as well. And if you've got questions, and I'm sure you probably do, Put them down in the comments. I'll reply as quickly as I can do, and I reply to every single comment that comes in. And also, um, if you look down in the uh, description below, as well as the Billings Accelerator, which is an amazing program, and I'm, I can't believe I'm doing it for just seven pounds at the moment, so fill your boots on that. Um, there's also a link there for a, a free guide to the 20 most essential um, sales skills for recruiters. And that will add you into the mail list and you'll make, I'll make sure that you get a notification of everything, every new idea and every new development and everything else that's coming through. So enjoy and I'll see you next time.